Okay, this is decompression problem number three. And you can see that we're going to be leaving the surface at 9 o'clock, leaving the bottom at 9.30. Maybe definition of bottom time is 30 minutes. Depth is 80 feet. First dive will be always charted using the City College dive chart, and then subsequent dives will be using the square wave profiles here. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to write in our depth, 80 feet. No decompression time limit is 39 minutes. So you can see that this is a no stop dive. We'll go ahead and chart this. We're not going to make any stops in the water column. Fill in 9 o'clock. Leave surface time. Fill in leave bottom time. Time to leave bottom is also 9.30. That's a reminder for the chart person. If the supervisor is dictated, I want the diver off bottom or kept to a 30 minute bottom time. That's what that boxes for. So our actual bottom time is 30 minutes. There is no residual nitrogen time since this is the first hour of the day. The sum of the two is our total bottom time that we use to pick our schedule, 30 minutes. So we are 80 for 30 if it fits on the tables. 80 for 30, but there's an 80 for 32. There is no 80 for 30, so we round it up to 32, and that puts us on the surface as an H diver. We're going to write H here and here two spots. We must put H. So if the diver leaves the bottom at 930, they're going to reach the surface at 933. That's because the diver is coming up at 30 feet per minute. Depth in feet that we're traveling, 80 times 2. Depth in feet times 2 equals ascent time in seconds. So 160 seconds is the total ascent time if we're traveling at a perfect 30 feet per minute. So that equals uh, 2 minutes and 40 seconds. We're going to round that number up to 3 minutes for charting purposes and start our surface interval at 933. So we reach the surface 933, reach surface water, same time here, and then we start our surface interval beginning at 933. There is no chamber decompression here. That's why this box is here. If we got out of the chamber, that's when we would start our surface interval. Okay, we're going to write in some phony pressures here, just for example purposes, so that you get used to filling out the chart. Uh, this is a surface air dive. The breathing mixture is air, and we're using the standard air decompression tables in water air decompression. It happens to be no stops. Okay, so at 9.33, I'm an H diver. I'm going to go ahead and move to dive number two and put that information at the beginning of my surface interval. Write that there, and then look at the information I'm giving you. I'm going to ask you what the maximum bottom time is going to be to make a no decompression dive to a particular depth. I have to give you that information, and I have to give you a leave surface time. So I tell you we're going to 100 feet, and you're going to leave the surface at 12 o'clock. I can write that time immediately right here. Subtract the difference between 933 and 1200 which is two hours and 27 minutes. So I'm an H diver for two hours and 27 minutes. Come to my surface interval credit table. H for two hours and 27 minutes has you leaving the surface as an F diver. This F diver is now traveling down to 100 feet. Scroll down. The diver is going to have residual nitrogen. That's what this chart is for here. 100 feet tells us that the diver has 20 minutes of residual nitrogen time. So I'm right that there. Now I'm asking you what the maximum uh, actual bottom time could be to make this a no decompression dive. So we have to define the limits of what a no decompression dive is for 100 feet. If the limit happens to be 25 minutes. Well, before you even get in the water, you have 20 minutes already against you in your tissues, still yet to be off gassed. So the max you could stay down is the difference between the no decompression limit of 25 minutes minus the residual nitrogen time. The difference between the two happens to be five minutes. That is the actual maximum time you could stay underwater at 100 feet. Not a relatively long time at all. I'm going to write that information here and here on the bottom. Depth on the outside, time on the inside. If I leave the surface at 12 o'clock, my actual dive time is 5 minutes, not 25 minutes. This is what I use to pick my repetitive group and my decompression schedule. Very important that you don't make the mistake of putting 25 minutes as the bottom time here. You'll mess up your clock. 
12 o'clock, leave bottom at 12.05. We have 200 seconds of ascent time, depth in feet, traveling times two. 200 seconds is three minutes and 20 seconds, rounded up to four, reached the surface at 12.09 as an H diver. 100 for 25 is what we use to pick our repetitive group. 100 for 25, if we scroll up on the tables, 100 for 25, keep coming up, shows that you are an H diver. 1209, I'm an H diver. Take this information here, transpose it over onto the square wave profile at the beginning of the surface interval for dive number three. And here we are, 1209. I'm gonna ask you the same thing on the third dive. What is the minimum surface interval to make a no decompression dive to a particular depth given a particular bottom time? Here that depth happens to be 85 feet and I'm telling you you have a particular task to do that takes 25 minutes. So the first thing that you must do is you must define what a no decompression dive is given that depth. The depth is 85 feet. We're gonna round that up to 90 feet since there's no 85 foot schedule or 85 foot table here. So 90 feet tells us that the no decompression limit is 33 minutes. Well, we're gonna be underwater for 25 of those 33 minutes, and you know we have residual nitrogen time, residual nitrogen in our body from the prior dive. So the maximum residual nitrogen time that you could have in your body is the difference between the no decompression limit and the actual dive time. I'm telling you the actual dive time is 25 minutes, so if you subtract the difference between those two, that is what's gonna tell you the maximum allowable residual nitrogen time that the diver could have in their body before they get in the water. The difference between those two numbers is eight minutes. So I am looking for a residual nitrogen time of eight minutes or less in the 90 foot RMT timetable. And if I come down here to the 90 foot table, I'm gonna scroll across and work horizontally until I find eight minutes exactly or less. The number is 26, 22, still too much. I have to wait, wait, wait. Getting smaller, 12, nine, and all the way over here, six is eight minutes or less. So I have to wait, scroll up until I'm an A diver. Now I know from my prior dive I was an H diver. So you look at the intersection between H and A is six hours and 33 minutes or eight hours and 52 minutes. Somewhere in between there is the amount of time that I need to wait. I'm asking you for the minimum for charting purposes so we have consistency. By no means am I suggesting that we jump in the water right at six hours and 33 minutes. But we'll use that for charting purposes so we have consistent answers. So if we reach the surface at 12.09 from the prior dive and we wait six hours and 33 minutes, we off gas, we reduce our nitrogen levels from H to A. We'll leave the surface at 1842, and we are going to stay in the water, H to A. We don't know how much residual nitrogen time. So we'll look H to A, and A is repetting down to 85 feet. So we'll come down here to the 90 foot table and again, we'll see that we have six minutes of residual nitrogen time. Six minutes residual nitrogen time plus 25 minutes puts us for an equivalent single dive time or total nitrogen time of 31 minutes. And that is what we're gonna to use to pick our schedule if it fits. So let's come up here and look at our decompression schedule on table nine seven and see if there's a 90 for 31. 17, 24, 28, 31, there we go. Fits right on the money, so we can use that. That puts us on the surface as an eye diver after this dive. So we'll write eye up here, we'll circle it. Now we need to figure out what time we're gonna reach the surface. Our actual dive time is 25 minutes, so that means we're gonna leave the surface at ninth, excuse me, leave the bottom at 1907. We have 85 lineal feet to travel, that's 170 seconds. Well, that rounds up to three minutes. Okay, so we'll add three minutes to 1907, reach the surface at 1910 as an eye diver. 
take that information, transpose it over to the beginning of the surface interval for the fourth dive. 1910, we're an eye diver. I am telling you, you're going to have a surface interval of eight hours, and you're going to have a bottom time of 20 minutes. You have a task to do that takes 20 minutes. I'm asking you, how deep could you possibly go to make this a no decompression dive? What is the max depth you could go to? The first thing that we can do is we have a surface interval quantified of eight hours, and if we're an eye diver for eight hours, we can pick a new group. So let's take a look at I over here for eight hours, puts us as an A diver back in the water. Now, we're going somewhere with the sum of the residual nitrogen that we have in our body as an A diver, when added to our 20 minute bottom time, cannot exceed our no decompression limit. So as always, I coach everybody to start at 60 feet and just add your RNT to your bottom time and then compare it against the no decompression limit. I tell you to start at 60 feet. We know that the no decompression limit here is 63 minutes. So if I add the residual nitrogen time for 60 feet as an A diver, I'll see that that diver will have nine minutes if it were to go to 60 feet. Nine minutes residual plus the actual bottom time of 20 gives you 29 minutes. Of course we can go to 60 feet for 29 minutes because the limit is 63. So again, we'll follow procedure and we'll just go 10 feet deeper. Let's go to 70 feet. We'll go to the 70 foot table in the A category and we see that the diver is going to have eight minutes of r and Eight plus 20 actual bottom time is 28 minutes. Can we go 70 for 28? Certainly, because the no decompression limit is 48. So let's go deeper. Let's go 80 feet. Come back over here, check the r and for 80 feet. 80 feet tells us that we have seven minutes. Seven plus 20 is 27. Can we go 80 for 27? Go ahead and check, the limit is 39. Go deeper, 10 feet deeper. A diver going to 90 feet now. 90 feet has six minutes of r and Six plus 20 is 26. The no decompression limit for 90 feet happens to be 33 minutes. We find that information right here. And now we're gonna go deeper, one more stop deeper. A to 100 feet tells us that we have five minutes of residual nitrogen time. Five plus 20 is 25. Can we go 100 for 25? Well, according to the tables, yes we can. Right here, the absolute max, no decompression limit is 25 minutes. Let's just go ahead and go 10 feet deeper and check and make sure that it's gonna go over. Okay, so we're at 100 feet now. Let's go to 110, A category, down to 110, and we're probably gonna go over five minutes of residual nitrogen time at 110 feet. Can we go 110 for 25? Five plus 20 is 25, 110 for 25. No, we can't because the no decompression limit according to the Navy is 20 minutes. So our max depth is 100 feet. Let's go ahead and chart the dive. An A diver repetting to 100 feet is going to have five minutes of residual nitrogen time. Let's just verify right here five minutes in the A category. We'll go ahead and write that information right here in the residual nitrogen slot. And now we're gonna add our actual bottom time or actual dive time. 20, we write it here and here. Depth on the outside, time on the inside. Add the two numbers together, gives you 25 minutes. That is the number we're gonna to use to pick our decompression schedule or our repetitive group designation. That is our total nitrogen time in our body, our equivalent single dive time. It's the sum of the residual from the prior dive plus this 20 minutes we're gonna be achieving on this dive. So 100 for 25. If there's a 100 for 25 schedule, we'll pick that and use that. Let's see if there is one. Yes, there is one right here, 100 for 25. It's right at the max. It tells us we did this correctly. Puts us up on the surface as an H diver right here, H. 100 for 25 is an H diver. 
So we'll take that information, we'll write it here, and now what we have to do is figure out what time we're going to reach the surface after this. An eye diver for eight hours leaves the surface at 3.10 in the morning, and they have 20 minutes of actual bottom time. It's very important that we just add the actual dive time, not the total nitrogen time. Remember, this is theoretical tissue time. So we add the actual clock time in there of 20 minutes, leave the bottom, therefore, at 3.30. That stops your bottom time clock. And now we must compute the ascent time to figure out what time we're going to reach the surface at 30 feet a minute. Depth in feet traveled, 100 times 2 equals ascent time, 200 seconds ascent time. That is 3 minutes and 20 seconds, rounded up to 4 minutes for charting purposes, reached the surface at 334 as an H diver, and we're done.